Hey, hey, hey. After midseason trades sent Tyrese Halliburton from Sacramento to Indiana, the second year Iowa State product gave a good taste of what a Halliburton led NBA offense. Spoiler alert. It, it's pretty damn exciting. Uh, but before we get into all that, it, it's okay if we rehash that trade just one last time. I know it's been talked about endlessly, but I, I swear I'll be quick. I'm just still so baffled by the Kings. And don't get me wrong, Darren Fox is a good player, all-star level guy. But choosing him over Halliburton to be the face of your franchise? That just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And I do get some parts of it. You know, Sacramento, they made a move to win now in an already stacked Western Conference. The Fox of Bonus pick and roll became one of the best in the league. And in 15 games after the Halliburton trade, Fox put up some career numbers and boomed while averaging 29 points, 4 rebounds, 7 assists, and a steal on 50-36-77 shooting splits. Evidently, Fox and Halliburton were holding each other back from their respective ceilings, and I think the Kings did make the right move in deciding to trade one of them. I just don't necessarily agree with the final result. And who knows, maybe Indiana only went through with the trade if they were getting Halliburton, and they wouldn't have done it if they were getting Fox. Maybe Sacramento wanted to reward Fox in a way for his longer tenure. Who knows at the end of the day. One thing I do know is that Tyrese Halliburton is an extremely special player. He's really unique in the fact that he's a 6'5 point guard with a 6 foot 7.5 inch wingspan, yet he doesn't dominate games physically. Rather, Halliburton has an extremely good feel for the game and is one of the rare players that can see a few seconds into the future on the basketball court. He'd already shown a lot of promise in Sacramento playing at the 2 guard for most of his time, but he really blew up after the trade to Indiana moved him into a more full-time point guard spot. If you actually look at the numbers on basketball reference, you'll see that Halliburton only spent 18% of his playing time at point guard in Sacramento, which compared to Indiana, goes all the way up to 62% of his time on the court. A big difference that will lead to some very noticeable uh, statistical boosts, which we'll take a look at now. We can look at the difference in stats for Halliburton's time in Sacramento this past season compared to his time in Indiana. Obviously, he played about double the games he did in Indiana and Sacramento, so take that with a grain of salt. But actually looking at the numbers, you'll see post-trade, there was a pretty significant boost in points per game, assists per game, turnovers per game as well, but that's to be expected as, again, Halliburton was taking on more usage and a bigger point guard role, so the ball was in his hands more. And then we could also look at the pre-Halliburton Pacers versus the post-Halliburton Pacers. Again, difference in games, take it with a grain of salt. But as you can see, in adding Halliburton to this roster, the team's offensive rating saw a big boost, the assist percentage saw a boost, assist to turnover ratio saw a boost, and there was just an overall increase in pace for the Pacers as well. A little, little joke there, a little pun, a little pun action. And you might be yelling at your screen right now, you know, Noah, what about the defensive numbers? Do we care at all about the defensive stuff for Halliburton and the Pacers? And to that, I say, defense schmefense. No, we don't care about the defensive numbers because Halliburton is really good offensively and we're going to, you know, Pacers aren't a good basketball team right now. We'll, we'll worry about the defense later. Anyway, that's enough of the statistics and numbers and all that stuff. Let's get, let's get to the good stuff. Let's get to the tape. Tyrese Halliburton is already one of the best floor generals in the league after just two seasons. He finished 7th in the NBA in assists per game last year while dishing those assists out in a whole variety of ways. He's got the pocket pass, he's got the no look, he can throw lobs, he can pass in transition, there's really not much he can't do. Something that stood out to me is that Halliburton has a tendency to use the jump pass a lot. Normally a very bad thing for players to learn, and overall considered a bad habit in the basketball world, but Halley somehow uses the jump pass to his advantage. His ability to hang in the air freezes defenses and allows more time for his teammates to create space from defenders. This all meshes together very nicely to create better passing windows, longer passing windows, and overall takes this negative and turns it into somewhat of a positive. And I say somewhat because there are definitely still possessions where Tyrese Halliburton will try to do a jump pass or something similar to it and just end up getting a pretty bad turnover. But again, he's, he's still a young player. Every young player is going to have turnover issues at some point, you know, some more than others, but with Halliburton, this is a welcomed negative, because it's, you, you, it's usually, you know, you all, it's a trade-off. Personally, though, my favorite Halliburton plays are where he simply just uses his basketball IQ to create a good shot and just get an easy attempt for either him or one of his teammates, because those are really the most beautiful plays to watch, just to watch it all unfold and happen in real time. For example, on this play, Anthony Edwards gets a steal and wide open dunk on the fast break, but Halliburton catches the inbounds pass on the run, goes right by Edwards' full court pressure, 
and pretty much creates his own fast break after a Minnesota make simply just by catching Edwards sleeping. Or here, the play breaks down and the defense is left scrambling. Halliburton realizes this and notices Anthony Edwards is guarding both him and O'Shea Brissett on the weak side with very little help, so he calls for a ball reversal that ends up with a wide open O'Shea Brissett 3. And then here, Halliburton gets the play started with the initial drive into the paint. It leads to more drive and kick opportunities until the ball gets back to him. He drives once more and delivers a beautiful jump pass for the easy assist. And by this point, I really hope y'all are starting to understand why this man is a wizard with the ball on the basketball court. And while the passing is awesome, the shooting is also spectacular. Tyrese Halliburton has a pretty unique shot diet and ultimately has the ability, in my opinion, to be a three level scorer in that he can shoot from three, he's comfortable in the mid range and he can attack the hoop when he wants to. But because he's such an effective distributor, you'll find that most of the time when he drives into the paint or toward the rim, it usually ends in a kick out or him dishing it off to a big for a layup. More often than not, does not end in him putting a shot up, which is perfectly fine because it's worked so far. I, I guess there's a part of me that would like to see him take a few more shots, but in those rare times where he does end up trying to finish a play himself, he looks pretty solid doing it, so I'm, I'm kind of torn. And let me reiterate about the three-point shooting real quick, because I do want it to be known for sure, Hall Halliburton is a sniper. He's a career 41% shooter from three on over five attempts per game, and as I previously mentioned, he does not always take the most open threes. He's taken a liking to using step backs and gather steps, Usually when he has a mismatch, you know, these types of shots allow him to create just enough space to get that wonky set shot of his off. And then in the rare event that he gets chased off the three-point line, has no one else to pass to, and he's finally forced to put up a shot of his own in or around the rim, the shot attempt still looked pretty good for the most part. Here, Halliburton takes the handoff and shows a pretty soft touch on a difficult floater. Here, he takes Jordan McLaughlin to the rim and uses his size and a strong gather to rise over the top for the easy layup. And then here, Halliburton uses the screen, sheds his man, and goes right at Moses Brown in the paint. And at this point, I'm going to interject real quickly because y'all know how much I love players that can draw contact and get to the foul line for some easy points. And uh, I, I need to talk about Halliburton for a second. He shot 85% from the stripe this past season on only two and a half attempts per game which is ultimately a bummer, but that number did see a bump after he was traded to Indiana as it rose up to 3.3 attempts per game, which is some good progress. Now one last thing I want to touch on briefly for this Halliburton video is his mid-range, because that's another area where I think has some real potential for him. He shot 46% on pull-up two-pointers, which is very impressive, and personally, I'd like to see him expand this part of his game even more than the finishing at the rim. Because if he could find a way to incorporate those same step backs and gather steps that he uses on the three-point line and incorporate that into his mid-range game, you know, especially when coming off of... I mean, even just look at guys like Chris Paul and how much he has terrorized opposing bigs in pick and roll over the past couple of years. And I don't mean to set unrealistic expectations for Halliburton, but based off of what he's shown so far and the numbers he's show shot at, I definitely think that's something that is attainable for him in the future and can definitely up him to something potentially even better than all-star level. <laughs> Which is, again, the, the whole reason why I don't understand in the first place why the Kings are trading him instead of De'Aaron Fox, because at the end of the day, I just think Halliburton has a way higher ceiling than De'Aaron Fox. No offense to Fox. Either way, I'll, I'll end the video with this. You know, the Sacramento Kings, they might have a better win-loss record as we head into this next season, but at, at the end of the day, I am way, way more invested in the development of this Indiana Pacers team mostly because of Tyrese Halliburton. He's at a point where he seems to have a really good understanding of the game, the shot percentages look good, and from here on out, it's just going to be him improving the little things, taking even more field goal attempts, and just ultimately taking more control of the offense. He's definitely earned it. And if you've made it to this point in the video, then congratulations, you're a real one. Now, if you enjoyed this video, maybe think about hitting the subscribe button, should be somewhere in this general direction. Or if you're not sure yet, maybe check out another video, which should be in this general direction. Either way, thank you for watching.